guess I like Ghostbusters quite a bit. Shocking, I know. And I like collecting silly things. I've gotten quite a few different versions of the movie. So let's look at all the different formats Ghostbusters was released on. Ghostbusters came out at the right time and was popular enough to have hit a lot of the more obscure media formats in addition to the ones you probably know. So let's start our look at these Ghostbusters formats with the one that was the most commonly used during its first home video release. And I actually have two of this first release of Ghostbusters on VHS because I don't know. The first home video releases of Ghostbusters were put out in 1985 by RCA Columbia, just one year under its theatrical run. The Red Border Ghostbusters VHS is probably the first thing most people would think of when they think of Ghostbusters on this format. And I think a lot of people associate the Red Border specifically with Ghostbusters, even though it was used for pretty much all the RCA Columbia releases around the time. I guess they just thought you would like it if all your RCA Columbia VHSs kind of fit in with each other. And it's kind of funny here that the VHS box and the actual cassette don't really agree with each other on what this movie's rating is. The box tells us that this is regular PG, while the cassette says that it's actually PG-13. Hopefully that wasn't a difference maker for you. So when Ghostbusters hit home video, this was during the format war between VHS and Betamax video cassettes. The Ghostbusters beta box actually has the Ghostbusters logo beveled out a bit. And opposed to the cassette just sliding out from the bottom like with the VHS, with the Betamax there's a little flap on the side where you have to pull it out from. Though the earliest Ghostbusters VHS releases were also like this. So as you can see, Betamax tapes were a bit smaller than VHS's. And you only got to see one end of where the tape spooled up on the oh no beta. My Ghostbusters beta tape is branded Fuji, which is kind of interesting as the back of the box says they're all made by TDK. The TDK mark on the box is also something true of the first VHS releases of Ghostbusters, but they took that off a little bit later and this Ghostbusters VHS doesn't have any specific branding on it. So it's kind of funny they just left it on the beta box when it's a Fuji tape. My Ghostbusters beta tape has a front label while the VHS has nothing, which is why beta was better. Also, beta was a bit better quality than VHS, but that didn't help it win the format war. By the time Ghostbusters 2 came out, you could tell Beta was kind of on its last legs. Instead of coming out in boxes which, you know, were actually made for them, they're just coming out in VHS boxes with stickers on them that said Beta. So, if you were still into Beta at this point, you had to know the end was near. And since these, you know, stickered up VHS boxes weren't really the right size for Beta tapes, you just kind of get some crappy insert filling to try and make it sort of hold the beta tape all right, but these things weren't really the greatest setup and the tape would often slide around a lot. So in 85 and 89 respectively, we got Ghostbusters and then Ghostbusters 2 on Laserdisc. Laserdisc is of course the giant CD looking format that was around a lot longer than I think most people are really aware of. And you can see me recording through it, hi! So yeah, there was a good reason why CDs were the compact disc. But despite the Laserdisc just looking like a giant CD, it's not digital like CD, it's actually an analog format like a VHS. Now there were actually two different types of Laserdisc, the CLV and the CAV. These two different types were also known as Extended Play and Standard Play. 
The big difference being that the standard play or CAV laser disc could offer a lot more playback features than the regular CLVs. This is a bit like the different record modes on VHSs, you know, the SP, EP, or LP. And these kind of had the same trade-off as the higher quality meant less time per disc. So to watch Ghostbusters on CAV, you needed two discs because these only held 30 minutes per side. So you'd really have to be into laser disc to want to watch it this way because not only would you have to change the disc once just to watch through Ghostbusters, but you'd have to flip it unless you had a player that would flip them automatically. The regular CLVs held 60 minutes per side, which meant you still had to flip it at least once to watch the movie, again, unless you had a player which could play both sides. But a lot of the people who were really into Laserdisc really wanted the special features that a CAV offered, which had way more playback options, including in reverse and perfect freeze frame. Alright, now here's where we start to get a bit more obscure with the video formats that Ghostbusters was released on with the CED video disc. CED stood for Capacitance Electronic Disc, which is kind of redundant when you read this thing out as Capacitance Electronic Disc Video Disc. So what exactly is a CED? Well, it's a movie on a vinyl read by a stylus much like an audio record. But unlike a record, the CEDs were housed within this kind of cartridge and would only come out once the player grabbed this front end of it, took the disc out, and then you would just have the empty cartridge to put back in once you were done watching the movie. See, the CED player would just kind of push in these tabs like this and grab the front end of the cartridge along with the disc here. And yet, like I said, it's like a vinyl record inside there, but it's kind of shinier than most. Ooh, CED, gaze into its pointlessness! Anyway, that was a good viewing of Ghostbusters. In it goes. So the reason the CE discs are housed within a caddy instead of just being in a sleeve like a regular audio record is because dust settling on them would actually cause them to skip. The CE discs were made by RCA, but it took them 17 years of research and development to actually put these out on the market. And that's one of the major reasons why this format just kind of came and went so quickly. I mean, you had better options by this point. CEDs were only kind of comparable in quality to like SP recordings on VHS, which was all right quality wise for the time, but VHSs were also a format you could record off TV on, so people were more likely to want to have a VCR in their house than a CED player. And of course, laser discs were already out by the time CEDs actually hit the market, so there wasn't much point, because if you're gonna buy a large, inconvenient movie format, it might as well be the one that looks the best. And actually, by the time Ghostbusters was released on CED in 85, this was already a dead format as they had stopped producing CED players in 84. But as this kind of annoyed people that already had a CED player to kind of appease them, they still kept making CED discs until 86. Now also in 85, but only in Japan, we had Ghostbusters on VHD. VHD stood for Video High Density, so it wasn't as redundant to say Video Disc VHD. This is also the first release we're looking at here that didn't just use the logo for their cover, but instead used the theatrical poster. Well, the poster for a lot of the overseas markets anyway, as the logo wasn't actually in behind them on the original theatrical poster, and this is the flipped European logo. Yeah, when Ghostbusters first came out, is actually before this no symbol was actually in common use in North America. But when they decided to use it for Ghostbusters, they flipped it from how it normally was. And in Europe, they said, we don't like that. The no symbol has to be the correct way. So they flipped the Ghostbusters logo on releases there. Anyway, back to VHD. This is a format that's actually very similar to CED. And it was actually the colossal failure of CED which prevented VHD from appearing in all that many regions. 
The VHD format was made by JVC slash Victor, and there were plans to bring this to North America and the UK at one point. But after the failure of CED, any plans to bring it to North America were cancelled, and it only ended up getting commercial use in the UK. So Japan ended up being the only area lucky enough to get home videos in this format. So unlike CEDs, VHDs actually did come with a little sleeve to cover the caddy. And I love that the VHD's caddy just kind of makes it look like a giant floppy disk. They were also extremely interesting on the backside. So yeah, the VHD did work almost the same as the CED, as you just stick the caddy inside the player, then it would grab the front part and the disc out, and then you'd just keep the empty caddy until you're ready to eject it. The actual vinyl disc inside the caddy was a little different with these two formats, though, as the CED was grooved like an audio record, but the VHD was a grooveless vinyl. The stylus for a VHD player would just fall along the tracks electronically, which meant a little bit less wear, though still wasn't as good as a laser like with a laser disc. So, VHDs just kind of fell somewhere in between CEDs and laser discs and were kind of quickly forgotten. This also has the original price on it, and as you can see, movies on formats like this were pretty pricey, as this was 7,800 yen, which is somewhere close to around $78. One kind of neat thing about VHDs is I guess some of them had the soundtrack on there for you as well. And now let's move on to a format that most people probably didn't even know ever had pre-recorded movies put out for it, Video 8. And even though this one only has the Columbia Pictures logo on the front, it is still an RCA Columbia release. Though the year this 8mm tape of Ghostbusters came out was the last year any of them would be branded RCA Columbia. Because on September 28th of 1989, Sony bought Columbia Pictures. And after that, most Ghostbusters releases were branded Columbia TriStar. And it was also Sony that was trying to push the 8mm tape as a home video format. I guess Sony was giving up on beta a little at that point since they were the ones also pushing that format. Most people didn't seem to think there's a big enough quality difference between SP recorded VHS beta and the Video 8. But honestly, comparing Ghostbusters on Video 8 to the VHS, it is a noticeably sharper image on Video 8. And even though the 8mm tape kind of disappeared very quickly as a home video format, it was very popular as a camcorder format. Meaning we can watch Ghostbusters as it was meant to be seen, through the viewfinder of a camera. Oh, way to crop Winston out of the photo on the Video 8 release, guys. Jackasses. Only three men! <laughs> Wrong. I really do love the oddity of seeing a movie on this format, though. It's like, that happened? Really? And speaking of things that just seem amazing that they ever happened, it's Ghostbusters on VCD! The video CD was a pretty popular pirate format for quite a while, but there were things actually officially released on it. There were some regions where the VCD format was really popular, including the one where this came from, Hong Kong. You can see here the Hong Kong rating on it, which is Category 1, which is kind of general audience. They also have a little document scanned in here in the corner, which I guess is proving its rating, which, you know, that's really helpful. I can totally read that. So I at least know of one other area that got Ghostbusters on VCD, and that was the Philippines. The VCD uses one of the original taglines for Ghostbusters, the Supernatural Spectacular. That was used on the original theatrical poster, but that's almost never used these days, as they tend to stick with the they're here to save the world or who you gonna call. And also sometimes they're ready to believe you. The cover of the Hong Kong VCD is kind of funny in that it has, you know, the regular non-flipped Ghostbusters logo in the larger form, but then in the title, it's got it flipped the European way. I have a feeling the larger logo was probably meant to be flipped like the one in the title. Especially as when this came out in 1994, Hong Kong was still under British rule. 
Kind of interestingly, their 94 release makes these the first release of Ghostbusters on a digital format. Of course, VCDs only held about an hour to 80 minutes max per disc, so usually to watch a movie you had to switch the disc at some point. Also, I gotta say, I really love how these discs look with the shininess and the four busters spread out between the two discs. That's much nicer looking than some of the DVDs. But of course, looking better is not something the VCD does with its actual video quality. The video on the disc is 352 by 240 with hard-coded Cantonese subtitles. Also, quite noticeably, for some reason, the picture on the VCD is much cooler than either the VHS or the Video 8s. Oh, and if you're wondering what's inside this insert, it's nothing! Woo! Supernatural Spectacular! Then in 1999, we finally got Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 on DVD. And these DVDs had one of my favorite covers for Ghostbusters 1 and one of my least favorite for Ghostbusters 2. I just really like how with this one they actually have all four Ghostbusters on it and even have Slimer flying off into the sky. It's a group shot from when they're about to fight Gozer, but I think this edit looks really nice. Then for some reason with the Ghostbusters 2 DVD, they used a picture which was clearly an alternate picture from when they're taking the photo for the theatrical poster of Ghostbusters 1. They did at least edit the patches on the jumpsuits to be the Ghostbusters 2 style, but that just makes me think more, why did they bother and not just use a promo picture from Ghostbusters 2? Was it because they wanted to edit up this nonsense action shot where they, you know, they're clearly fighting? Fighting the Scolari brothers with their nonsense proton streams. If they wanted to use something a little different than the usual Ghostbusters 2 cover, why didn't they just use one of the pictures that included Dana Barrett in it? Or hell look, the insert inside the DVD case has got a much better picture here with the four of them shooting their proton streams. What, would that one have worked too well? I just don't get having a Ghostbusters 2 cover that excludes Winston when he was usually there on those. But I guess the better and worse covers kind of reflect the quality of these two DVDs. Where the Ghostbusters 1 DVD was packed with a whole bunch of special features, the Ghostbusters 2 one got the usual filler crap to pretend that there is any actual special features like menus, languages, subtitles, the trailer, um, scene selection. None of these are special features. Man, this Ghostbusters 2 insert's pretty funny. I like how they inserted Dana Barrett, you know, seamlessly into the Statue of Liberty shot here. Also, the Ghostbusters 2 DVD is a flip disc with widescreen on one side and full screen on the other. And now we have the kind of subset of DVD, which were known as Super Bit. The Super Bit DVDs of Ghostbusters were released in 2004 in Japan. Now, Super Bit DVDs weren't exclusive to Japan, but Ghostbusters on Super Bit was. So, what was the deal with Super Bit? Well, it's kind of in the name. These were DVDs that had the movie in a much higher bit rate than usual DVDs. So these Super Bit DVDs usually didn't have like any special features on them since they're trying to save all the space of the DVD for a higher bit rate. So before the HD formats, I guess the Super Bit DVDs were kind of the nicest quality you could find for any of the movies released on it. These were pure performance DVDs. The Superbit collection will set a new benchmark in high resolution until Blu-rays and HD DVDs. Next up in 2005, Ghostbusters hit UMD. UMD stood for Universal Media Disc, meaning it could be used in anything, except it could only be used for PSP. 
UMD video was another thing Sony thought would be a cool idea, I guess, and they put out a handful of movies for PSP. So the UMD is just kind of like a mini DVD housed within a little cartridge. And since it was a mini disc, its quality wasn't really as good as DVD, which is why people kind of quickly forgot about them. The UMD had the green slime background, which was like the 2005 DVD release, which I'll talk about more when we talk about all the different variations of Ghostbusters. Next up, Ghostbusters finally hit home video in HD on HD DVD! Ahem, <laughs> yeah, I am of course lying. This never really happened. HD DVD is one of the few obscure formats Ghostbusters didn't actually get to be on since Sony was behind the Blu-ray and they actually won this format war! We got one! So yes, in 2009, the real first way you could get Ghostbusters in HD was on Blu-ray. And then a little bit later, in 2014 for Ghostbusters, they started doing mastered in 4K Blu-rays, which were supposed to look a little bit better. These two releases look pretty similar, but looking at the actual movie, you can spot some differences between the 2009 Blu-ray and the 2014 one. The Blu-ray discs of these two releases are almost the same as well, just with a little mastered in 4K marking on this one. And if you thought that that's where things ended, you're wrong, because now we've got 4K Ultra HD Blu-rays! I do like the covers for these ones, but I do also like that you can notice that this picture is almost the same one as the one they used for that Ghostbusters 2 DVD. Though they could have put a nicer shot of Winston somewhere on here than the back of his head where he's getting out of Ecto from a deleted scene. Also, the Slimer they show here is the exact same one they used for the 99 DVD. The Ghostbusters 2 cover is really nice, and I think is one of the first covers to actually include Sigourney Weaver, Rick Moranis, and Annie Potts. Though this should be the Ecto-1A Zero Stars. These releases give you the movie on regular Blu-ray and the Ultra HD 4K thingy, just in case you don't have something that can actually play those yet. Also, you notice something here? They've got the Euro Flipped logo in the title, you know, like the VCD. That's on. This is a North American release, so I don't know why the flipped logo would be anywhere on here. Oh, by the way, the Ghostbusters 2 logo, that never gets flipped, just the first one. Also, my Ultra 4K Blu-ray of Ghostbusters 2 had something very important that my Ghostbusters 1 one was missing. A cover that shows the exact same cover. But look, this is rainbowy with this, so worth it! And that's pretty much all the formats that Ghostbusters has been released on to date. There is a possibility it came out on V2000 cassette and DVHS. But I haven't seen a picture of Ghostbusters on V2000, and the one picture I've seen of it on DVHS might have been a custom, because I haven't found any info saying that it was ever officially released for that format. So I hope you found this look at all the formats of Ghostbusters interesting. I found it pretty interesting, some of the weird formats that this movie movies come out on. There's not going to be a ratings for this one because that doesn't really make sense to do so here. But I can say that the MMZ overall is 10 because it's Ghostbusters and it's my favorite movie. When we return to my ridiculous Ghostbusters movie collection, we'll be looking at all the different variants I got.